Steve here, Off-Road Grind, Bentley Custom Off-Road. And today we are working on a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. We're gonna be putting in a OEM bumper swing out. So what I mean by that is we're gonna use the OEM bumper and we're gonna put a swing out on it. So let's see how that goes. I think it's gonna go well. I'm planning on having the spindle hinge just outside the door here. We wanna make sure that the door can open obviously with the arm on there so i'm thinking it's going to come up to here somewhere maybe the corner i'm thinking try not to cut too much into the the bumper but i think we're gonna to have to probably cut out a little bit of the corner here to allow the spindle post to come into here and the other thing we need to do is this back window pops up and swings up so we have to have the bumper uh, or the tire rather far enough down that we can get that up like to get a bit of an angle on it because I think that looks kind of nice but um, we want to make sure we can open this window so here we go <laughs> Okay, first thing I want to do here before I even touch the bumper and take that off is I want to mark on here where the bumper is in relation to the body. So when this bumper comes off, I have an idea of where I want to be building the brackets. So I'm just going to make a little template here because um, I don't want to be putting the bumper on and off constantly. And what I'm going to be doing is putting the spindle hinge on this side, but I'm going to be swinging it across probably almost all the way to the other side because Parker's thinking he probably wants a potential fuel carrier in the future. Right now, all he just wants is a tire carrier to get the tire out of the back of the truck. And I think, yeah, he's got a, he's got a spare in here, but he's got his off-road tire in a spare off-road tire in the truck. So probably doesn't fit up in here, I would imagine. Yeah, anyways, so we're going to pull off the bumper, but I'm going to draw a little template here that's just going to mimic each of these sides and mark on here the height of the the bumper in relation to the body panel here so that when I make the bracket I know exactly how high I want the bottom of that spindle hinge to be because it's going to sit right up here. So. <clears throat> this guy right here so it's going to go in probably come up a little bit higher because I'm going to want a, a little plate on the bottom that is going to have the pin associated with it so we're going to put that in separate and so this this can spin around with the stop pin and go into the different little holes that we've got because i like to keep have the pin so it's closed in the closed position and then halfway open so that you can get the back door open and then completely open but without the tire swinging around and clunking the tail lights so that's kind of i'm thinking it's probably going to go somewhere around here and try and get it as close as i can i might be able to get it over here so in which case it's going to be just inside this this thing here, I might be able to get the, the spindle base all inside this um, bumper. So the only thing I'm going to have to do is cut a hole on the top and to just drop this down on to, over the, the pin. So that would be awesome. But as I take the bumper off, and I'll show you where those are in a minute, then I'll be able to see, uh, am I going to be able to get this bumper back on by just dropping it down over the top, like wiggle it in and drop it over the pin. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to get it off with this collar on, but take the nut off the top of the spindle hinge, pull all the bearings out, and then just pull this off um, as you pull the bearings out. But then to get the bumper off, if you ever needed to do that in the future, should be able to pull it up over the spindle hinge. So that's kind of my plan, but we'll see how it looks once we get in there and we start disconnecting. Okay, quick recap. I did not need to take these two bolts out, I don't believe. Is what I've done instead is pull these side bolts off there and there and then in the back here those two they're not on each, done that on each side and then the hitch bolts one on either side of the hitch and i'm thinking this is just gonna come right off electrical connections we've got the Bloody hell, what is going on over there? There we go, okay. 
little dust seal. Okay. Oh, we got it. Okay. So now the little clips here for the tail light license plate thing. I'm gonna pull that bumper off. Okay, those little license plate lights. I actually just unscrewed them because the, the wire went right into the back of the bulb. So I'm not messing around with that. Okay, so let's kind of pull this off. Yeah, there we go. So that came out pretty easily. Let's take a look inside here now about what we're going to do with this. This bracket that we're going to pop on here. So it's probably going to be in this zone here somewhere which is good in that I've got lots of room to put that spindle. I think this is going to work. Okay, this actually solves a lot of problems and I'm going to figure out the angle that this is going to butt up to that plate there. So that's another eighth inch thick bracket that I'm going to be able to bolt right onto the frame of the vehicle. So I actually don't have to weld this into the frame, I'm actually welding it into the bumper, which is pretty cool. And then what I can do is cut this down a little bit here, this bit of a frame bracket here, and actually weld this support into this bracket as well. So that's gonna give me some extension support. So I'm gonna weld it into that bracket, weld it into this bracket, and have this come down basically like down in here, drill a hole through here for the base of that, weld it all around on the top and the bottom of this two by two inch, three sixteenth inch thick piping. So that'll give me some great structure. And at the end there, it's bolted right around the support into the frame. So that's going to be super solid there. And then I just need to cut a hole up in here wherever I end up putting this. This is going to probably go, I'm going to probably have to cut this right out like that and weld it along the bottom and the top into here and then have the hole for the end of the spindle up in here. Drill through the cap here and I think I'm good. It's actually going to be really solid. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that's going to be some really good height as well. Cool. Okay. I like it. Okay, you're going to pop this back on. Make sure we're going to get this hole cut in the right spot before I start messing around. Okay, I've got the collar position marked. Pulled this up, made sure I centered it along the back bumper here. I want it close, but I don't want it too close. And I want to be, have a enough room here for Parker to put a table in if he wants. Later he talked a little bit about that. So pop that here. And I think that's going to be a good spot right there. Drilling that through there. And I think that's going to allow the spindle to stay just inside the, the curve of the bumper here on the inside. I'm going to pop that hole in. If you have a drill with a hand like this, use it. I didn't one time using one of these step bits going through some, I think it was 3 16th inch steel. The drill caught and whipped around and actually broke a meta, metatarsal. I think you have metatarsal or is it metacarpal? I think one's in your foot and one's in your hand. Maybe a metacarpal bone in the hand here and it's still, I can't, <laughs> still can't grip it as tight as I can with this one. So if you got a handle, use it. Super important. Okay, here we go. Sweet. Okay, good. So that worked out. Nice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this top cap off because I'm going to weld 
that spindle into the top cover of this bumper just for another anchor point. And then as I showed you before, with the two by two that's inside there, I'm going to weld it into the two by two at the top and the bottom of that tubing. So I'm gonna to have to cut another one of these holes through the, with that, I'll probably do that on the, um, the drill press over there. And here is the extension that I'm going to put into the into the frame. We've got the spindle hole cut out, so that's a perfect fit. So now what I need to do is I'm going to cut the end off here somewhere in here. Well, unfortunately, my remote mic stopped working. I ran out of battery, so I'm going to voice over here for the next little bit until I realized that was happening <laughs> and then got the sound back. So. What we're doing here is we're just fitting the length of the brackets. I've got to cut the end off there that's going to weld into the bracket that it's butted up against. And that'll give it the right length to come into the bottom of the spindle there. So the spindle drops into the hole that I drilled at the end of that 2x2 two two square tubing. So we're going to cut that first. And as you can see, I'm going to have to drop that down through that cross bracket. So I'm going to have to cut across the top and bottom of the, the tubing in order to allow that to drop down. So first of all, though, we're just going to cut the end off the tubing get it to the right length, kind of measure that where I thought it would need to be, kind of measure from the bracket to the inside of the spindle. It doesn't have to be exact, like to the millimeter or sixteenth of an inch, because you're going to wiggle it a little bit and torque on it with the, um, the swing arm in order to get the swing arm horizontal. But that allowed it to fit in. I didn't have to cut into the face of the bumper, which is awesome. I was able to keep everything inside the bumper, so it looks really solid and clean as well and so right here i'm just making sure i like the height so that the bottom collar of the collar on the spindle is above the bumper which is good remember we've got that plastic cover that's going to go over there so it has to be a little higher than it should be based on um, where it's at right now so i just put a pen under there to lift it up to the right height making sure that the bumper is in place and i think i actually put a couple of bolts in there as well just to make sure that it was solid and in the right spot and here we got the swing arm, so we're going to put that into place. Make sure that that line that I was pointing to there is facing in, because it does leave a little bit of a, like an indentation on the finish. So I always want to have that on the inside rather than pointing out. So that's this, this the welded seam of the tubing. Making sure the truck bumper is horizontal, and then it was, I think it was like 0.2 of a degree. And then just making sure that the the swing arm itself is horizontal as well, making it nice and level, putting some spacers in there, and then checking that it's the right height in alignment with the back door there. So I'm just measuring the height from the crease on the back door. And we're going to tack weld the swing arm to that collar in a second. You'll see that as we get into that. And then you'll see the zerk fitting there on the collar. Make sure you've got that in the right spot. So turn that around. I, I like to hide it in behind the swing arm, or I guess in front of the swing arm. So right here, we're just, I'm squeezing the swing arm up against the collar, making sure that's nice and solid, and then tack welding that into place. And then once I've got that done, then I can pull the whole swing arm off and finish welding the spindle. I'm going to put a couple tack welds in the bottom of the spindle as well before I take the arm off. So as you can see, those are already in there. I just put those right there. So. But that came out really nicely. And also I don't want the bracket moving. So that tubing, I put a couple tack welds in there. Once I had the swing arm horizontal in the right spot, and I'm going to put a couple tack welds up in there. And now we're just going to start to weld the whole thing up. Actually came together really well. So this two by two tubing that I've got actually had some primer on it. So I just made sure I sanded off the primer where I was, I knew I was going to be welding. So just make sure you do that before you put that into the, into the position here, because you're not going to be able to sand it once it's in place. And if you have primer or paint on it, you can't weld it very effectively. So just really burning it in here making sure it's staying in the right spot. Those tack welds did a really good job of holding that in place. 
and it's putting a nice solid weld around the top of the bumper. It's great that this was all steel. And now we're finished welding the collar to the swing arm. And I take this, make sure I take all the bearings out of it. I don't want to heat those up. So I'll make sure I do most of the welding with that off. And I want to put a little support bracket across the top of the tubing. So that's a four inch collar, but I've used a two by three tubing here. So I was making sure I was able to get another inch of support on there. I think that's smart. Might as well, I've got the, the height of that collar, might as well use it. So I'm just coping out the circle here to fit up against the collar. Just do a little a couple of relief cuts and cut those out and then sand it down. Actually, you don't have to be super exact because you're putting weld in there, but the tighter you can get it, the better you're gonna have of a weld. And here I'm just cutting the triangle off. Pop that into place. Tack weld it. And then just burn it in. And it actually finishes it off nicely. I think this looks better than just having it not there. You can see on the, the Kia we've got in the garage there, I was actually doing some painting on the back, but I've got a fiberglass blanket up on it so that the sparks from the welding don't fly up and land on the glass because it'll melt right into the glass. So if you've got a vehicle around, either move it or get a fiberglass blanket like that up to protect it. Now we're going to cut the swing arm to length. So I'm just trying to figure out where I want to have this positioned. And once I've got that length figured out, I'm going to be able to cut that off. I'm going to do a little cap on the end. You'll see that. And then we're going to start cutting into the top of the bumper to put the stop in the latch at the end. And keep in mind, this side of that swing arm is actually eventually going to have a double fuel carrier on it. So we want to make sure that, you know, it's got some solid support on that side as well. So just cutting the swing arm length, got that all dialed in. And we're just going to cut out, a, I just use like a, I think it was a 16 gauge or maybe 10, but probably 16. Actually, that looks like 10 gauge, I think. And just tack welding it in. I'm just going to sand it down once I've got it all welded in and just create a nice clean cap on the end. Pretty solid. That, that came out really nice like that. Just smooth that out. And now here we're just measuring where we're going to put that actual stop and going to cut right into the bumper, weld that stop in there, and I'm going to be able to weld the polyurethane bump stop on the bottom half of that, or the bottom side of that swing arm, and we're going to weld the latch right into that stop block there. So this is always a little exacting because we're cutting a hole in the bumper. So there we go. Sound is back. I got this sorted out. I'm pretty lucky, I think, in terms of the height. So this needs to be actually, the top of this just needs to be the bottom of this metal plate, which is great because then I can weld it all the way around the corner here. So across here, across the back, and then on the top here. And then I can weld it inside this bracket. I had to snip the corner out, but that's perfect. So that's just gonna fit in there. And I'll weld that all around. Nicely, I'll pull the bumper off and take the plastic off so I don't melt it and then that will be in place and then I can weld this L stop on the bottom of the swing arm and then 
weld the latch on to the face of this block. We're good. And then I can work on the tire carrier and pretty much done. catch and latch and stop her in. I'm gonna put the, I think I'm gonna put another pin in here to probably drill a hole right through here. Tube in the bracket. But that'll work and it'll just pop right down into a hole there. First though, I think I'm gonna pop the tire on. So I'm gonna put the tire position on. We already figured out where we wanna have that. Obviously we don't want the tire covering the light so the right side of the tire is going to be here and we want it to be low enough that we can open up the back glass so we'll get started on that and we're just going to have a short little post probably going to come up to here up into the tire um, put a tire plate on there obviously and put a couple of support angles down to the side there to give it a little bit more stability but first though I am starving so I got some chicken salad some triscuits I'm going to eat this before I continue on. Put the bumper on, put some bolts in there, secured it so it's not going to wobble a bit. Um, secured the, the latch, got that all cranked down so the, the whole swing arm is not moving at all now. And then I've got the tire in place as to where I want it, so just inside the, the brake light and low enough that I can close the glass here without it touching the tire, which is great. And I think I've got it pretty much parallel to the swing arm. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of two by three and I'm probably gonna put some side supports up here anyways. But I'm just gonna figure out where I want the angles to come into the tire plate here. Can you see it? There we go. Into the tire plate. And it's gonna draw an angle kind of down across from where I want it to enter the tire plate down to the down to the swing arm and I'm just gonna cut it cut a V and then fold it and then um, keep the back of the, the metal intact and then just weld the V together so I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing anyway so I'm just gonna get a piece of I guess probably a ruler and then just Put it up, put it along there and draw my little mark. So I've got the tire marked. So what I did is I just took a ruler in there, held it up flush against the plate and brought it back to that vertical tube there. And just drew a mark on it. And that's gonna be the angle of the tire. And so now I'm just gonna measure how far it is from the back, because I forgot to measure that when I was holding the ruler up there. And I'm just gonna measure from the back of that mark there, right there, to the tire plate. And that's how long I'm gonna cut that top piece. We got eight and three eighths of an inch from the top here. So that's the angle. So if we take that eight and three eighths. So I'm gonna, Cut this square at the end, and then whatever angle this is, I gotta take out a little sliver so that this almost comes down. And then 42 this way.
Okay, got this all clamped up. Put this all work. Put some clamps on the top to the top of this blue clamp, wouldn't slide down, and then just hooked into the bottom. That's, I don't have to refine it now, I can just weld it up. down a bit and let's see if it fits. thing with the clamps. I'm just going to clamp the face here on each one and uh, tack them into place. And I think, I think I'm pretty much done other than uh, now I've got the tire, I can get the tire um, popped on there. I think I'll weld all this in. Actually, you know what, I'm going to keep it just tacked in in case I screwed something up, um, in which case I'm going to pop the tire on and then do the door opening thing. Make sure I got the, I'm happy with this once this is all in. I got my pins in the right position, then I can final weld everything into place. Okay, coming together so nice. So I've got it all tack welded in, in place, into the back tire plate here, into the support, onto the swing arm. I think the only thing I really need to do now is make the stop pins location, weld those into the corners here, and then put a plate in here for the pin. And so I'm thinking the same thing here. I'm probably going to do another pin here and then just drill a hole into this corner right there. Um, I think that's going to work well for making it easy to open it here. So, okay, so that's what I got to do now. Other than that, I think I'm good. We've got the glass. Clears the tire nicely, which is awesome. I've got this in the right spot on the back, not blocking the light. And here's my little pin hole thingy. So I am going to I think support that somehow with a piece of wood or something, <clears throat> and then spin the arm around where I think I'm going to have the pin. Just make sure it's dropping into the right spot here. I should. And then weld that into the collar up here. I think that'll work out well.
Steve here, and we are finally done the Chevy Tahoe swing out bumper carrier. And here it is, looking awesome. Love the way it's looking. So Parker wanted to have the possibility for an extension here for fuel carriers and maybe propane tank, high lift jack. So we just extended that out there for now, which worked out well because there's not really a place in here to effectively mount the stop system here so that's going to work out great it's one big swing arm which is awesome pretty simple i put a, a stop pin here as well as over on the other side so we've got that one and this way he doesn't have to reach across to the right hand side to open this up to release it so this will pop out nice got a nice little locking catch on there i like that found these in black so i was using um kind of a chrome look but i like that black look anyways all done like the way it worked out. Good luck. I think he's going to be happy with that. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Catch you soon. Bye.